Hi, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to the Bible Barbie podcast. I am your host, Anne Elizabeth. As y'all could tell by the title, we're going to be talking about offense. If you're anything like me, a word like this may even offend you because you may realize things about yourself that you've been ignoring. You may feel the conviction of the Lord. And I just want to remind y'all what the Lord reminded me, that God does not convict us to ridicule us, but he convicts us to heal us, to show us the things that are wrong so that he can walk us through rewiring our minds to live more righteously. And if you're anything like me, sometimes conviction can have you sulking and you just feel so bad about yourself but I don't want this message to do that to anyone because if God can have grace with us then we can have grace with ourselves and we can forgive ourselves for not doing better because we didn't know better before we get started I do want to pray so if everybody could close your eyes bow your heads we thank you god we thank you for the healing that you're about to do in our hearts we thank you for revealing things to us for being such a good father and a friend and paying attention to the little details in our lives lord and we just pray that we wouldn't take offense from this message lord we wouldn't take offense from anything god that we would allow you to do the work in us that is necessary and we pray all these things in your name jesus amen speaking of jesus y'all i got this little pillow and it's a jesus pillow (laughs) and if y'all like it because i know some people might like it um i'm gonna tag it below it's from the tiktok shop and i'm gonna tag it below so that anybody who wants it could get it so y'all lately the lord has definitely been healing my heart and dealing with me about the spirit of offense for most of us when we're offended or when someone hurts our feelings we are very quick to take a stance of defense. Our defense tactics look different. Some people automatically fire back. Other people, if you're more like me, my first reaction is usually to shut down. And while I don't usually react physically, mentally, I'm putting up a block between me and that person. The Lord has revealed to me that storing offense in our hearts is just as bad and it can be just as detrimental. Whichever response you relate to, I think we can all agree that both of them come from places of pride. This week I found myself very offended by something that someone I really hold close to my heart did. Everything in me wanted to do what the old Anne would have done and shut down and make distance between me and that person but Thankfully, the new Anne has learned a thing or two, and instead of doing that, I decided to bring my feelings directly to the Lord. And after I did this, the Lord led me to a sermon that was given by John Bevere. And if you are unfamiliar with who he is, I am going to tag that sermon below because it was an amazing watch. But something that he said and that God used to speak directly to my heart was he defined what betrayal really means. And he described it as when a person seeks his own benefit or protection at the expense of one he has a relationship with and it began to dawn on me that when we're offended by someone and we feel like we have to protect ourselves whether that's mentally or physically if it's not dealt with correctly when our ego is hurt we can find ourselves slipping into a mindset of betrayal and even going forth with acts of revenge not only can it destroy your relationships but it can also put your heart in a position that's hardened and burdened in scripture god tells us not to avenge ourselves he tells us that revenge is his and there's a reason for this i know it can be so hard to put your pride aside and to truly let god handle your battles but the lord brought me to a perfect scripture where we see this played out and i want to read it to y'all i am so excited to share this with y'all so if you have your bibles please join me in first samuel chapter 25 we're gonna be reading about king David and we're going to be reading about a time that David found himself almost losing his marbles and taking revenge into his own hands. I love King David so much. I love reading about his stories because despite the fact that he was a very imperfect person, God loved David and I think we should all look at david and be reminded that god loves us what david had was a heart after god didn't mean that he was perfect he made a lot of mistakes and the bible definitely puts him on blast but god still 
really loved David and he still kept all his promises to David. So for a little background on this story, King David, after Samuel died, him and his men found themselves in the wilderness. And they heard of a man called Nabal who was in a place called Caramel. He was a very rich man and at this time he was shearing sheep. So David sends his men and he tells them to go in peace and to ask Nabal if he can spare anything that he has on hand for David and his people. David even notes that there was a specific time where Nabal's people were around David and that David and his people treated them well. They didn't steal anything from them. They made sure they were protected. So basically what David is doing is asking a favor of someone that he had been kind to in the past. But where David made a mistake and where I think many of us make a mistake is that just because you are kind to someone, just because you do something for someone, you shouldn't expect the same thing back from those people. When our expectations for others are too high, we give them an opportunity to let us down. And David was definitely let down when Nabal responds by yelling at his men, who is David? Am I supposed to take my bread, my water, and my meat that I butchered for, my shearers and give them to these men I don't know where they're from so after hearing this David was angry David was definitely offended and he tells his men to pick up their swords because they're about to go back and he's gonna kill all of Nabal and all of Nabal's men here we see David reacting like many of us would when we're offended while most of us don't have 400 men to gather and tell them to pick up their swords a lot of us do enter mental wars when we find ourselves offended. We, we take a stance of war. We're ready to fire back and hurt whoever hurt us. At the beginning of the story, we were introduced to Abigail, who is Nabal's wife. And she was described as an intelligent and beautiful woman. When Abigail hears what her husband did, it says she hurried, taking 200 loaves of bread, two clay jars of wine, five butchered sheep, a bushel of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on a donkey. And she goes to offer a peace offering to David to say sorry on behalf of her husband when she meets with David after apologizing for the stupidity her words not mine of her husband she says now my lord as surely as the lord lives and as you yourself live it is the lord who kept you from participating in bloodshed and avenging yourself by your own hand she goes on to say when the lord does for my lord all the good he promised you and appoints you ruler over israel there will not be remorse or a troubled conscience for my lord because of needless bloodshed or my lord's revenge david accepts her apology and he says today you kept me from participating in bloodshed and avenging myself by my own hand otherwise as surely as the lord god of israel lives who prevented me from harming you if you had not come quickly to meet me nabal wouldn't have had any males left by the morning light so abigail returns to her home and when she gets there her husband nabal is he has a cheerful heart he had just finished feasting like a king so she doesn't say anything to him that night but in the morning after he sobered up she tells him what happened and the news upsets him so much that it says his heart died and he became a stone and about 10 days later the lord struck nabal dead verse 39 says when david heard that nabal was dead he said blessed be the lord who championed my cause against nabal's insults and restrained his servant from doing evil i think this story is perfect for us to read and to see that offense is something that can naturally happen to us but we should never let it overtake us because like abigail told him there's no need for you to do this the lord will take care of it because if you take care of it when the lord exalts you and grants you the promises 
that he has given you, your heart will be burdened. You will have a troubled conscience for what you did. Why God tells us to avoid revenge is because he knows what revenge does to the heart. Nabal who died because his heart died and he became a stone. That is what could happen to us when we take revenge into our own hands, when we let offense sit in our hearts. Offense is something that can sneak up on us and attack us. A revelation that the Lord gave to me is that when we are introduced to Nabal, scripture tells us that he was shearing sheep. So I had to look up what does shearing mean because I did not know. And when I did look it up, um, shearing is a word that means to cut the wool off or to break off or cause to break off. So he was cutting off the hair of the sheep. But the other definition to break off, the Lord used that directly to speak to me. And I realized that Nabal in this story is like the enemy. And the enemy is using the spirit of offense. He's bringing offense into our lives to cut us off from the body of Christ. He's using the spirit of offense to attack the children of God in a way that they wouldn't see, that they wouldn't realize on their own. Yet despite that Nabal or the enemy was trying to affect David in that way, in the end, he suffered the death that he was trying to put David through. As I was reading it, I was reminded of the scripture that says, he who endures to the end will be saved. And I couldn't remember where that scripture was from, so I had to look it up and I ended up um, going to Matthew 24. And I wanna read you guys the verses or the verse that is before that. So starting in verse 12, it says, because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And in this scripture, Jesus is talking about the end times. And I think we really need to take note that lawlessness will multiply because the love of many will grow cold. When we're offended, our hearts grow cold. The love that we could have for another person grows cold, especially when we hold that offense in our heart. You know, sometimes we're truly offended because someone did something that hurt us. But I've also realized that sometimes we're just offended because we think someone did something to try and hurt us. Sometimes people's intentions are not the way we see it, but because of trauma, because we haven't healed from prior offenses, we hold that in our hearts and we begin to see things that aren't there. It messes with your perception. And something that the Lord is teaching me is never to let offense store in your heart. Yes, things will offend you. Things will hurt you, but you have to let them out. You have to speak to the people that hurt you. You have to speak to God. You have to speak to someone you can't hold offense in your heart like that god is a great healer i like i told y'all before i definitely struggle with opening up to people but one person that i know i can always open up to is jesus and now i'm at the point where i think the lord is really teaching me and pushing me to be able to communicate with other people as well to not feel weak when i feel hurt but to be able to express that and fix the problem through communication through love not everybody is out to get you not everyone is your enemy and just because someone hurts you that doesn't mean you have to end the relationship sometimes we just need to talk we just need to open up about our offenses and i'm praying that that sets someone free because the lord is truly setting me free in that area of my life someone did ask on one of my previous videos if i could tag the scriptures below and i'm going to try to do that from now on i would love to hear from y'all how this video make you feel how do you feel about offense i just love talking to you guys i love you guys so 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 much and i'll talk to you guys later